There you go. Welcome, Luc. So Luc Soler is the president of Visible Patient. He participated in the Boston Strasbourg Initiative in 2019. I'm very glad to have you and see you again uh, digitally. It would be great to see us physically, but uh, you know, this is the best we can do. So really happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. You know, it's normal to have me in a virtual world because I work every day in the virtual world. And so <laughs> work at distance is logic. So I immediately share my screen. Uh, you see that the project that I have today is to present you a, an example of what can be uh, an efficient Strasbourg ecosystem link with USA partnership. And if they ask me to present something, it's because we have lots of already planned and realized uh, result of this kind of uh, partnership. For, for instance, to start really fastly, we have worked and we work currently a lot with a Biomodex company. It's a company located in Boston and in Paris. And this startup proposed a model, like you see here, printing model from 3D models that we provide them. It is a system. What you perhaps don't know is the fact that this startup start all history in ARCAD by developing this own surgery for the own course, the course in the RISP uh, for ARCAD. And it was the beginning of their story. And thanks to ARCAD, they have proved the capability to do simulator based onto printed model. And from this start, they developed their story in Boston and uh, as you know, also in Paris. Second example of such partnership is really recent. It's our partnership with Eticon, Johnson & Johnson. Uh, we have signed an exclusive marketing and sale partnership. They presented this partnership soon, uh, not soon, <laughs> in a, in last week or two weeks ago and to the 19th November. Uh, and it's a really big story for the future. And now I would like to explain you why it was possible. It was possible because we have an amazing ecosystem in Strasbourg. And this ecosystem is based initially from IACAD, which is an amazing institute of research that Professor Marisco presented you. But it's not only IACAD, the ecosystem of Strasbourg. IACAD is a base, but you have also another base, which is the University of Strasbourg, and the third part, which is the Strasbourg Hospital. And these three elements are really important. You have here public education, a public hospital, and here you have both, you have private education, private uh, assistance of patient and research. And also you had, you need to add something for companies. And you have seen this wonderful presentation before with all the capability of company development in Strasbourg. So we have amazing place for that. And we have also amazing peoples because you can do nothing without peoples. And we have a really nice network, not only in Strasbourg, you see also in Boston. And here you see a picture of my last year uh, position in, in Innovo when I was invited to, to be here and to learn. And I've learned lots of things in Boston. And one of the things I've learned is uh, American spirit that was amazingly useful for me when we have negotiated with Johnson & Johnson. I can say that it was one part of our success. And the last element that is really crucial is to have stars. And we have at Strasbourg an amazing star, a Superman who is Professor Maresco, of course. <laughs> and this Superman is, of course, unique. And you need to have such unique people who have vision of the future. So, of course, as you know, perhaps not, you don't know, but it's that surgeon would like to be Superman. Professor Maresco is a Superman. He's a surgeon. He's perfect. But he has some limitation. Like any surgeon, he cannot see through the patient. And it is a dream of every surgeon to see through. And to see through the patient, they need today to use medical imaging. So they haven't got an X-ray vision. They have a CT scan vision, a set of slides, cutting slides uh, with gray level image. And it is a major problem because in reality, you cannot really efficiently analyze gray levels. Here's a really exam easy example. Your brain analyzes this square here of the chessboard as a clearer uh, B uh, square than the A square. It's logic because you have an alternance between dark and white uh, uh, chess. And of course, in such a case, you understand that the B will be on the white and your brain immediately understands that it will be white. So of course, A is darker, but it's wrong due to the shadow with this cylinder. And when you put that outside from the chessboard, you can see, perhaps not well because you are at distance, that the letter B square is darker than the letter A. It's not easy for your brain and for your eyes to see that, but for the computer, it's so easy because you have the value. And this value is the digital information. And it is what is interesting. With computer science, you have digital information much more accurate. If I link these two elements, 
you have a vision of variation of gray level from darker to whiter. It's totally wrong. There is no variation here. It's only due to the chessboard. It's an illusion that is due to the fact that we have a limited capability of view. We can see only 16 gray level of contrast. So it's the first limit we cannot see easily gray levels, and gray levels is the base of any medical imaging. Second problem, the medical image, as I've shown you, is cut in slice. And when you have cut in slice image, like for instance, this uh, Michael Murphy heart, but certainly you know well this Michael Murphy heart, it's a set of objects like this, here it's a set of slices. We cannot understand what is this object from the slices. The only way to see that efficiently is to have the good orientation. It can a kind of 3D reconstruction. And when you have this good orientation, you can understand what is this art. And it is exactly the problem of slices. When you combine these two limits of our brain, you obtain an amazing number of errors that create every year 40,000 deaths in US. It's an amazing number that can be overcome through technology. So what can we do? Of course, everybody cannot be a Superman. But I have a good news for you. In US, you have a superhero and lots of superheroes, and you have Iron Man. And you know, Iron Man is uh, based on two, an optimization of humans thanks to robotic and artificial intelligence. But if you notice efficiently what is inside the system of artificial intelligence, it's not only analysis, it's also a way to reproduce the information. Artificial intelligence will only detect the problem. But the visualization is the second element that allows you to understand the problem. For instance, if I say you that there is an error 502, you don't know what is this error, and you don't necessarily know where it is. The artificial intelligence has detected the error, but it doesn't assist you. To assist you, you need more. You need a visualization. And the human brain easily understands colors on 3D. So you can reproduce in 3D. You see the same here. And when you do that, you optimize the system. So artificial intelligence is only one element, but you need also visualization. And this visualization must be onto mobile system. It's what you see here. If you apply that to surgery, you obtain Medical Lab project. Medical Lab project was written on 1999 in IRCAD. It was the one of the first IRCAD projects. It was the first project I wrote uh, with Professor Moresco. We obtained a first fund in, uh, in Strasbourg, uh, thanks to the, the local region Alsace. And we have started this project. You see the project, the hospital send the medical image through internet. We do through our lab, medical lab, the 3D modeling. So we do the medical image analysis, thanks to artificial intelligence on, on computer software. And then we give back the model to the physician. It is what was planned, and it is what we realized after 15 years of research. And so after this 15 years of research, we have created Visible Patient Company, which is indeed the first uh, medical image analysis lab online. And you see how it works. The physician sends the image. It's a secure platform, so it will be uh, tended after that to visible patients that do the modeling. Really important, it is based on computer science. So behind the analysis by the computer science, we have human that control the result, that can correct the result, adjust the algorithm if mandatory, and there is a double check. Like in any airplane, you have double pilot to avoid any error. After that, we give back the result, and the surgeon can visualize the result. We can do that for any part of the human body, but we are focused essentially today on two these main organs, liver, uh, HPV to be more generic, thoracic surgery, urology, and colorectal. And we have some other applications, as you can see here today, that, is, that are today our main application uh, of our solution. Now, from this model, you can use it through an easy software, the visualization. And this software is free of charge. You can download it onto Apple Store. It's the name is Visible Patient or on to PC or Mac. And then you can visualize the results. So what does that give? I would like to give you an example, really easy example from a lungs. You see, I say easy example, but you understand immediately that it will be complex. Because when you see the branches, you understand that surgery of lung is complex. We speak about early detection of pathologies. It's one solution to detect earlier. But sometimes, even if you detect earlier, you cannot apply necessary surgery. And there is a second problem. What arrives when you cannot detect earlier? Is there no solution for surgery? Is there only drug? The answer is yes, there is some other solution with surgery if you have a better vision. I would like to give you this example. It's a patient who had already 
a resection of half of her leg, uh, left lungs due to a first cancer. Then she had a second cancer, and then they have resected a second lung on the right part. And you see the problem now, she had a third cancer here, and they don't know what to do because they cannot reject another lung. How to solve the problem? With visible patient, first you have a 3D reconstruction, so an image analysis, you see it's like Google map, you have the map, which is a satellite view, and that is superimposed, uh, so you have the map in color that is superimposed onto the satellite view, that is a medical image. And from this map, it's this kind of thing is exactly what I mentioned before. It's the error 502. It's a really interesting information, but it doesn't give you a, an enough easy to understand image. We can so switch in 3D to have the same patient in 3D. What's that change? In this case, everything. Because thanks to this 3D image, we can see here, and I will show you that we have the list of organs, we can remove arteries and veins and check the location of tumors. We can see here that the tumors is located in this territory that is known for surgeon as the segment nine. Here there is an anatomical variation. There is two branches for this segment nine. So what we can propose is to reject only these small branches. First, great benefit. If you be, want to be more large, you will reject these two parts. But what is important here is to reject these tumors. And what is also really important is to be sure that you will reject the good arteries and vein. Normally, for one branch, you have one branch of artery and one branch of vein. So if you don't have the 3D modeling, you will cut the first artery and vein you will find around this branch. So for the artery, you can superimpose, and you immediately see here the artery corresponding to this branch. No problem, it's normal, like what you could expect. What about the vein? It's totally different story, because for the vein, you see that you have this vein here, with a drainage that is an accessory drainage coming from this branch just here. If you cut this branch, which should be logically what you do if you don't have this map, you will kill this, tumor, this segment just near the normal natural segment. That means that if you don't have the model, you will make a mistake. Without this model, you cannot do any surgery like that, what we call segmentectomy. It's not me that says that, it is the surgeon who did the surgery. Here is this feeling after the surgery, this intervention could not have been considered without that kind of 3D reconstruction or no other therapeutic project was contemplated for this patient. It is exactly what we expect from virtual reality associated to artificial intelligence. Be able to create a possibility of surgery, that means of creative surgery, to a patient that normally in the past should not have any surgery and should go to pharmacologic treatment that are, of course, important for patients where we cannot do surgery. But if we can do surgery, it should be better, of course, to propose a curative solution. So it's an example to uh, illustrate you what we do. We have performed more than 4,000 patients. It's a number before this year. So we have performed 1,000 more patients this year. And we have another aspect that is important. We have obtained uh, coverage by private French insurance. And we have large number. Uh, I can announce that we have signed recently with Alliance on ProBTP uh, Grand Test. Uh, it was last week. So we have more and more insurance working with us. And it's a really important information. For instance, in Strasbourg, uh, at the hospital of Strasbourg, the team who work with visible patients, and to the 31 patient performed to the last two months, 17 was covered by their insurance. So you see, it's a really important percentage. Now, uh, this image can be used preoperatively, but also intraoperatively, of course, from a tablet. But I say you that we will become an Iron Man and an, an Iron Surgeon. So we have also work with, the, of course, the HoloLens. And it's what you see here with the HoloLens. It is what I see with my eyes. I see through, so I can see my normal environment. And I can manipulate with my hand the object like if it is in the air. It is exactly the image of Iron Man that I've shown you before. And it is what we can expect from the future. This future is named digital surgery uh, in the Johnson & Johnson proposal. It will be linked, of course, to robotic surgery, as Professor Morisco said you. So what we can conclude on that, success is not final, failure, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that comes. Why I, I conclude with that? I've shown you success. Why I say you, success is not final. And why I say you, failure is not fatal. It's because this year, we have discovered a new pathology that changed everything. It was COVID-19. And perhaps you don't know, but COVID-19 reduced the number of, of surgery. It was a cancellation number of 72% worldwide. 
It's an amazing number. That means that every day, every day, we have 2 million of people who have a cancellation of their surgery during the lockdown that we, have, we had in our countries. How we can solve the problem? Because this problem is important. Every patient who has a cancer who could not have a surgery can be delayed. But perhaps what you don't know with this article is the fact that they said to cover the number of delayed surgery, we should need an increase of 20% of the surgical activity during 45 weeks. It's impossible. So of course, after 45 weeks, several patients will become not uh, operable. They cannot have a surgery. So what we did in front of this problem is the fact that we have said success is not final, but also failure is not fatal. So we have said, what is the problem? The problem is to detect earlier the COVID-19 problem. And here is how they were working. They were working from an image, and of course, it's not easy to do that. So we have used our visible patient software to do an analysis of the image. What you see here is a safe lung without any pathology. And what we did with our system is to detect in the same way a pathological lung attacked by COVID. And here is what you can see with a direct volume rendering. It's nice because you immediately see the pathology, but it's not an informative enough information. What you need is to have the volume of the infection. And it is exactly what we did to create what we have called the new uh, diagnosis of severity. And it is what you see here. The software we have developed allow to detect fully automatically the different area where it is attacked or not, where you have a, an infection or not. And so you can compute the percentage of remaining safe lung with this system. It's under uh, evaluation currently. We have not yet the CE mark or FDA approved for this new diagnosis of severity. But the first result of that was to show from the first study, uh, and it's a pre of course a preliminary study result, it is that when the, third, the patient arrives in the emergency department, we can know seven days before what will be his level of infection seven days later, it's only from the image. That means that we can know the severity level when he arrives immediately, even if all patients look similar. So with this image, you understand that my, my wording, which is the fact that Optimist is believing that every problem is an opportunity to make a world better place. And it is exactly what I've shown you with COVID-19. It was a real, real big problem for all the humanity, but it was also an opportunity to do something better. And this Optimist is exactly what you find in Strasbourg. Here, it's a website that has become an Optimist with Strasbourg. It's not a story I invent. It was really, a, it is a real website with Strasbourg or Optimist. And I want to say to you that become a optimist for the world means do a better world for the future. Thank you for your attention. Great. Thank you, Luke. Thank you very much for, for this presentation. I am personally pumped uh, and very uh, energized by this, uh, by everything you're doing. It's clearly, you know, right on par with the issues at stake that we were talking about and the opportunities and, you know, congrats to visible patient and all the the progress you guys have been making in the last few years there. Bravo. Any questions for Luke? We're a bit over time here, so let's uh, open for a couple of questions. Anyone has a question? Let's just see here in the question. Thank you, Luke, this was really great. Um, I'm just looking here, Luke, one second. So Nicolas Pellerin is asking, do Luxolaire use only CT scans? No, I, we, we can use uh, also MRI, uh, but we need 3D imaging. So that means that without 3D imaging, you cannot do 3D reconstruction, of course. So we use CT or MRI. OK. Any final questions from anybody? Okay, so I think, Luke, we can complete this. This was really great. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Janos, Ander, Dara, Nick Paradisio, Nicola Pellerin, really appreciated this uh, call today. And thank you for sticking to the end. Hopefully, we've all learned uh, a little bit what are the different you know, opportunities, challenges. And together, we can actually help these entrepreneurs go a step further and continue to use the Boston Strasbourg ecosystem. I know Sarah Delude is with us from the Economic Development of Boston. Hi, Sarah. 
Thanks for being there as well. We had the Children's Hospital from Boston. We had several startups that are wanting to get in touch with IRCA. The new look will make the introduction as well. And uh, thank you to uh, Janosa Ander for covering you know, the European landscape. This is really great, guys, to see everything that's going on and we can change things and it's super exciting. Thank you, Nicola, for inviting us. Uh, NextMed is definitely the place to be and we're super pumped and excited. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you for night. participating, everyone. If you need to contact anybody, just contact us or shoot, a, yeah, shoot me an email. That's the best. Everyone has my email, and I will make the introductions. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Great presentation. Thank you. Bye-bye.